Hi amazing viewers, welcome to Christianity over Islam with San Shimon. And on today's debate, San Shimon has an amazing discussion with Yift Christian who was converted into Islam, finding out the truth about the Quran. Let's watch this amazing video. How long have you been a Muslim? 11 months. Yes, and what was your background? <clears throat> I uh, came from Christianity to Islam. What kind of Christianity? And I'm not really sure what it was. Okay, so you didn't know much. That's fine. Okay, so you were pretty much a nominal Christian then, right? Not a devout one. Yeah. Okay, so what version of Islam did you embrace? The Sunni Islam. Okay, so you became, even Sunni Islam, you have Ashari and Salafi. What did you become? The Salafi. Okay, so then... Did they teach you what you believe about Allah? Yeah. That you believe Allah has two right hands, a foot, a shin, gonads, eyes, and he's above the arsh. And these are actual sifat of Allah, unlike anything in creation? He's actually unlike creation. Yeah, so you believe that. So he has two right hands? Two of the right hands, yeah. And so can I ask you a question? Those attributes of Allah they're uncreated right <clears throat> yeah so that means these attributes what we call body parts you don't like to call body parts because that's the brainwashing they're uncreated that means Allah has always existed with these attributes that means he's always existed with a shape and a form now logically because you guys talk about being logical Allahu Alam logically if you have a shape you need space to dwell in so, do you believe Allah is the creator of all things? He is the creator of all things. No. He didn't create his hands, his feet, his shin, or the space that he occupies to dwell. Because if you have a shape, you need space to dwell in. So, he didn't create that, did he? <clears throat> think logically, because you're smart. You're not uneducated. You came from the Netherlands, you're educated. So, think with me. So, he didn't create all space. Because the space that his hands and his foot and his gonads need, cannot be created okay so he's not the creator of all things i mean he's not um, like um, creation no i didn't say he's creation cohen listen to me careful which they did not teach you and in jesus name may he bless your mic because i want you to listen so guys put up with instruction because this guy <clears throat> just became a muslim not knowing christianity too much when you tell me allah has two right hands even though they are unlike anything, they're still really right hands. And he still really has eyes. And he really has a shin. Well, anything that has <clears throat> hands and feet is a shape, a body of some kind. And a shape, a form, needs space. So if these are uncreated, then the space that Allah dwells in must be uncreated. So Allah could not have created the space that he occupies. Think logically, because you tell me it's not no. rational. So, this shape has to be of some size. How big is this shape? Because that means the space must be bigger to, to contain him. So, you didn't think about these things when they deceived you into becoming Muslim, right? Mm. Maybe. Right, Cohen? Yeah, maybe. Okay, secondly, the Quran is a speech of Allah, right? Yes. Kalam Allah. It's not Allah, is it? No. But it's uncreated, right? It's part of his attributes. Yeah, so the Quran is Kalam Allah. It's uncreated. So it has no beginning, correct? Yes, no beginning. The Quran, right? The, the Quran has no beginning. Yeah, speak clearly in the mic. Just get, get closer to the mic and relax because we're going to walk through you. So the Quran is not Allah, right? No, it's not. So Allah is uncreated, right? Yes. And the Quran is uncreated? Yes. It's Do your much. math. How many is that? What did you Do say? your math. Allah is uncreated. Quran is uncreated. You said Quran is not Allah. 
You got two uncreated things, huh? I mean, the Quran is part of Allah's attributes. Oh, so the Quran, not Allah, but it's part of Allah, so it can still be one, right? Mm. Yeah, exactly. You didn't think about your religion. You left Christianity that you do not know for an Islam that you do not know. It's sad, but that's okay. Hopefully, God will open your heart. That's why you're here. And I'm hoping the Lord will bring you. So, you're okay with the Quran being the word of Allah that became a book, right? It was spoken into a book, yeah. Well, it wasn't simply spoken. The Arabic Quran is the Quran. When you open up the Kitab, the Mus'haf, because yeah. Allah, your God, Allah says to Muhammad, we sent down to you the book, 548, Kitab. The Mus'haf, the Kitab, that book is the Quran if it's Arabic, right? Yeah. So you believe Allah's word became a book. So what's your problem with Christians saying God's eternal word became man? <clears throat> because. Because what? <clears throat> because my, my, our God cannot be my contained. Oh, but your God is contained because you just said he has hands and a foot. That means he's contained in space. Are you listening? Yeah. His form is unknown. His form is what? His form is what? His form is unknown. But oh, but what a cheap him. excuse. Allahu Adam. That doesn't solve your problem. He still has a form. Form requires space. So your God is contained because you believe he's above the throne. Al al Arsh. How can he be above anything if he's not a shape that has space? Can you explain that to me? Your God is contained. And the Quran is Allah's speech, right? Yeah. And yet it's contained between two covers, Mus'haf. So what do you mean? Mm, the message came later. Well, the, the Quran has always existed even before it was revealed. You're confusing its revelation with its existence. So the Quran wasn't there before creation? I mean, our speech definitely is eternal. But the Quran is a speech. Don't make that distinction or you're going to be a kafir. The Quran is his speech. It's not simply a revelation of a speech. So the Quran has always existed. Not as a book. It became a book. That's why. That's what I was telling you. If the speech that is uncreated can become a book why can't the word of god become flesh you didn't answer that question because allah doesn't need to become a human okay but allah doesn't need to become a book but he became a book according to you no, for guidance oh so you admit allah became a book for guidance book, Good. Uh, book into existence buddy you're not listening to him listen to yourself maybe if you listen you'll see how you just contradict yourself so allah can become a book for guidance but he can't become man because he can't be contained but allah has a body that <clears throat> he's contained with or body are you listening to yourself yeah okay so you're okay with your god having a shape and form that contains him that's uncreated so your god is contained i'm still waiting for you to solve that dilemma for me i mean he is omnipresent no he's not not according to Salaf Islam, it says he is present by his knowledge. So you're a bad Salafi if you say that because now you're an Ashari. So I thought you said you're Salafi. Maybe. So you don't know what you are? <laughs> okay, that's fine, man. Because you've only been, they deceived you. So how come Allah has two right hands? He doesn't have a left one? <clears throat> huh? It means that he has the right hands. He's what? He you know another hadith narrates that he has speak clearly the mic. Another hadith says what? That he has left hand. Well now he's got two right hands and a left hand, so that means he got three hands. That's a grotesque monster. Me. He has two of the right hands. Two of what? Hands. Two what again? Two of the good hands. Two good hands? Two good hands, yeah. Okay, so you're saying left hand is bad? 
Mm, that's not what I said. Okay, so, but the Hadith says he has two right hands. It's not my legit right hands. They're not legit, so they're fake? They're illegitimate? I mean, I mean, Allah is definitely outside of creation. No, he's not. If he has a shape and a form, that means he needs to be contained in space. So you're saying that space is uncreated? Okay, so that means Allah and something else is uncreated. So I'm still trying to figure out your, your God. So does Allah have a left hand or not? Mm, uh, it says in another hadith that he, he, held, he holds things in, a, in his left hand. No, it doesn't say left hand. It says he holds in the right hand and he holds in his hand. So the hadith you're referring to. But I know there's a hadith that says he has a left hand, but it says he has two right hands. Here. Here it is. I'm putting. going to put the hadith on the screen. I just sent it to you in private chat. This is from Sunan Nasai. It's great Sahih. Here it is. This is from Sunnah.com. So here you go. Okay. Let me show it to you. So that means Allah has three hands, two right and one left. Here, let me show it to you. It was narrated by Abdullah bin Amr bin Al As, the ass, that the Prophet, right here, right yeah. here, we put it on screen. It was narrated from Abdullah ibn Amr bin Al As, the ass. The Prophet said, Those who are just and fair will be with Allah, most high on thrones of light, at the right hand of the most merciful. Those who are just in their rulings and in their dealings with their families. And those of whom they are in charge, Muhammad, one of Neri said in his hadith, and both his hands are right hands. Sahih. Yeah. Okay, so here it says right hands. Now, here's the one. Now, this is the one you're talking about that he places something in his right hand and left hand. Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. This one you're referring to. There are other narrations says he puts it in his right hand and he puts other things in the other hand. But this one says left okay we'll go with this one sahih muslim book 39 number 6704 here you go so if he has if both his hands are right but then he has a left one that means he has three hands abdullah bin omar reported allah's messenger saying allah the exalted and glorious would fold the heavens on the day of judgment then he would place them on his right hand this is what you're referring to and say i am the lord where are the haughty and where are the proud? He would fold the earth, placing it on the left hand, and say, I am the Lord, where are the haughty and where are the proud today? So this is what you're referring to. Other nations will not, will not say left hand, but that's okay. This one does. So I'm asking you, if he has two right hands, but then he has a left one, that's three hands. So yes, that's why Allah is unlike anything creation, because this is a grotesque-looking monster. How many creations you see... Two right hands and a left one. But your God is a grotesque-looking monster. You okay with this? Mm. In the Quran it says that he is independent of all the worlds. Not independent of his body parts, though. Mm. He's not to be described as having a form, body, limits, directions, and material existence. He doesn't what? Particular space or location. Yes, he does. He's above the throne. And the throne is above the seven heavens. He's above the throne. And the throne is above the seven heavens, and they're above the seven earths. So what do you mean he has no location? So you don't believe he's al -al -arsh, above the thrones? <clears throat> above the throne, singular. Lord, save me from error. So he's above the throne, right? Yeah. And the throne is above the seven heavens? Yeah. And the uh, seven heavens above the seven flat earths? Because oh. chapter 65 verse 12 says, Allah made seven heavens and the earth, the like thereof. Seven earths, seven heavens. So you have seven heavens, seven, I'm sorry, seven earths, seven heavens, and above the heavens, the throne, and Allah's above the throne. So what do you mean? No location. He's above the throne. So the throne has no location? <clears throat> Mean it is my... And why does your God descend to the lower part of the heaven if creation can't contain him? Every third part of the night, he descends to the lowest heaven. 
if he's omnipresent, why is he descending and asking if there's anyone praying? And creation can't contain him. Could you explain that to me? That's my, during the Tahajjud prayer. That's the what? The, the Tahajjud prayer. Uh, well, that's still, he's descending to the lowest part of the heavens. That's what I'm asking you. Why? Why is he descending to the lower, lowest part of the heavens? Here, let me get you the hadiths. You ready? I thought you said creation can't contain him. Here it is. Here's the link. Sal Bukhari. I'm going to put it on the screen for everyone. I'll send it to you in the private. Sal Bukhari. Okay. Here you go. So let me post it for you. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out. You said Allah can't be contained, but he has a body that contains him. And that body needs space, even though it's unlike anything creation. He's above the throne and he has to descend into the lowest heaven. That's creation. That means he's entering his creation. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, Every night, when it is the last third of the night, our Lord, notice, every night, when it is the last third of the night, our Lord, the superior, the blessed, descends, goes down to the nearest heaven and says, is there anyone to invoke me that I may respond to his invocation? Is there anyone to ask me so that I may grant him his request? Is anyone asking <clears throat> my forgiveness so that I may forgive him? So why does your God... Enter into the lowest heaven if he can't enter in creation. Mm. Mm. It, is it is descending in a real sense in a manner that benefits his majesty might. You All better not make ta'wil. You better not. You better not make ta'wil. You better not allegorize this. The Salaf did not explain the how. They just accepted what it said. Once you try to explain it, you're no longer Salaf Salih. You're not following Muhammad's companions, their followers and their followers after them. You're not Salafi. So better not explain it. He comes down in a, in a manner suiting his majesty, but he really comes down just like he has really, he really has two right hands and he's really above the throne. So I'm still wondering if creation can't contain him, how does he enter creation? <clears throat> How does he enter creation? Because you don't know your own Quran and sources. You're only going by what they tell you. So since your God can enter creation, he has a body that <clears throat> contains him, and that body requires space. I still didn't hear a good answer. If the Quran is Allah's speech that became a book, why can't God's uncreated word become flesh? You still didn't explain to me because you didn't give me a good reason. Because he is what? And as you're thinking about it, can I ask you another question? Okay. <clears throat> it says he descends. Uh, guys, here's my article on this. And I'm going to get you the article. The article I'm quoting from, here it is, and I'll get you another one. It says he descends at the lowest heaven at the third part of every night. Now, in some parts of the world, it's day. So what's night for you, it's day for someone else. So when it says he descends at the third part of the heaven, in the third, I'm sorry, in the lowest heaven, third part of the night, which part of the world? Because if it's night in one place, it's day somewhere else. So where does he exactly descend? <clears throat> you know, he's omnipresent, but... You keep saying he's omnipresent. I will give you 50 million bucks if you quote me a Salafi scholar where they say he's omnipresent. He goes, he is present by his knowledge, not he himself by his that, that meaning essence. His essence is not present everywhere. Why do you keep saying that, dude? But that <clears throat> doesn't answer the question. According to the Hadith, he descends to the lowest part of the heaven every third part of the night but if it's night one place it's daylight somewhere else so which part of the world does he descend at the third part of the night because if it's night in the netherlands it's daytime somewhere else if it's night in saudi arabia it's daytime somewhere else 
<clears throat> and you left Jesus, who you don't know for this religion. Amazing. Okay. So think about that one. <clears throat> yeah. Mm, going to Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Ibn Hajar, the commentator on Bukhari. So what did he say? May, may she quote from Imam Baidawi, which he say which he says that he what is intended by the descent is the is the light of his mercy and so no, that is Allah. not that's not the original interpretation of the Salaf Salah. That's a lot later commentary by someone who's influenced by Kalam philosophy he doesn't descend by his mercy he descends himself so now you're giving me the explanation of later muslims who come thousands of years not thousands i'm sorry lord save me from error hundreds of years later but that means you're not a salafi so just say i'm not a salafi and are you saying the mercy is speaking in the lowest heaven so when allah says who is it that will invoke me let him invoke me. That's actually the mercy speaking. So now you made a mercy, the mercy of Allah person. <clears throat> so you just made Allah's mercy a person because you said he descends by his mercy. Well, that means because he's merciful, he comes down. But if you're saying, no, it's his mercy coming down. Well, then you just made his mercy a person of apostasies that actually appears and speaks so if allah's mercy speaks are you saying allah's attributes are actually living persons that are uncreated so how many persons you have in your godhead it's not really that it's the speak closer to the mic buddy what was it It's not really that he's my. It's not really that. It's not really that. What do you mean? Anybody, your religion is mass confusion. So you claim you believe Allah's one, and that you believe in Tawheed, right? Yeah. Okay. Well. I just showed you you have, you have problems with your Tawheed, but one problem I have is how can you believe Allah is absolutely one when you believe the Quran is uncreated? That means the Quran has always existed, and yet you have the Quran. <clears throat> it's supposed to be Allah speaking, which has Allah either speaking to himself in eternity or the Quran is a divine being that speaks with Allah. For example, Surah Al-Fatiha. And I'm going to give you a hadith where the Quran comes on the Day of Judgment and debates with Allah. Surah Al-Fatiha, which you have to recite 17 times a day, is uncreated. Right? Maybe. Maybe. It's part of the Kalam, the Quran. It's uncreated. Surah Al-Fatiha. This is a prayer. Now I'm going to show you the dilemma. Pay attention because you sound intelligent. This is a prayer that has no beginning. It was there before creation. Chapter 1 of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay, I'm going to read it for you what it says. Chapter 1. In the name of God, Allah, the most merciful, the compassionate. Now notice, this is a prayer. Praise belongs to Allah, God. Rabbul Alameen. The Lord of all being, the all merciful, the all compassionate. Who's praying this prayer before creation? Because it's a prayer. Look, praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all being, all merciful, all compassionate, the master of the day of doom, Malik Yomadin, thee only we serve. To thee alone we pray for secure for strength. Guide us, Surat al Mustaqim. The path of those whom thou hast blessed, not of those against whom thou art wrathful, nor of those who are astray. This is a prayer praising Allah and asking Allah for guidance and mercy. And this prayer was there before creation. So who is praying it? Think about your answer so you don't set yourself up. Who is praying it? <clears throat> Me 
in the Quran. It's written in Fiq al Al Akbar by uh, Imam Abu. It's what? Allah's attributes are eternal. They are not speak new. Speak louder in the mic. Created? Yeah, speak louder in the mic, buddy. Speak louder. It's written in Fiqh al Akbar by Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ana. Allah's attributes are eternal. They are not new or created. Who says the attributes of Allah are not eternal? Or they are created or have doubts regarding them? It's a disbeliever in Allah, a kafir. The Quran well, speaks you Allah. Say it's then. You're just repeating what Abu Hanifa said. Written in the heart of. We're not talking about it's written. You just said it's uncreated. Abu Hanifa agrees. So that means this prayer was there in eternity. You're just confirming what I just said. So I'm still wondering before creation, who prays this prayer? Mm. It was more revealed in. This is the place where this video get more interesting. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it to subscribe. Becca. Who cares where it's revealed? I'm talking about before Mecca was created. This prayer, Surah Al-Fatiha, is uncreated because it's Quran. So that means this prayer was there before there was a Mecca, before there was a Medina. Who was praying it in eternity? Who was praying it, man? Come on. <clears throat> You know your God, Allah, recites Quran before there was creation? Your God, Allah, recites Quran before there was creation? <clears throat> Let me show it to you. You ready? So Allah, in creation, in before creation, is reciting Quran. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here you go. Sunnah.com. Here it is. Why is your God Allah reciting Quran when the Quran includes prayers of worship to Allah? So when Allah is reciting Quran, he's praying to himself, worshiping himself. Here it is. Let me show you the hadith. A hadith. Here you go. Let me read it for you. Mishkat al Masabih, Book 8, Hadith 39. It's also found elsewhere. But let me just show you so you don't think I'm making it up. And you guys make fun of Christians. Stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. Here you go. And we'll talk about Jesus, whom you don't know why you left him, comparing him to Muhammad. Here you go. Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira. Here it is, right here. So everyone sees it on the screen. Abu Huraira reported God's messenger, Allah's messenger, saying, A thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth, a thousand years before heavens and earth existed, Allah recited Taha and Yasin. Taha and Yasin. Okay. He recited chapter 20 of the Quran, Yasin. And when the angels heard the recitation, they said, Happy are a people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this, and happy are the tongues which utter this. Darimi transmitted it. So, your God, Allah, before heavens and earth existed, thousand years before creation, He's reciting Quran, Taha Yasin. And those. Surahs, you'll have surahs where Allah is being praised, Allah is being glorified. So Allah is reciting Quran about people who don't exist, events that haven't happened, and praises to himself. So why is Allah reciting Quran where he's going to be speaking to himself, praising himself, invoking himself? What's going on here? Why is your God reciting Quran? Isn't it ibadah when you recite Quran? It's worship, ibadah. Cohen? Yeah. So your, your Allah is performing ibadah, worship, because he's reciting Quran. And dude, and you and you guys make fun of Christianity. Stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. This is also found in, in Tirmidhi, same hadith, Tirmidhi. On alam.org, now they changed They changed the numbering. It's still in the Hadith 660. Same thing, Nadir Abu Huraira. They keep changing the links, but that's okay. It's online. It's not a lie. Here it is. I'm going to ask you again. So 
You became a Muslim following the religion that's irrational, and you left Christianity, you did not know. Allah's Messenger said, a thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth, Allah recited Taha and Yasin. And when the angels heard the recitation, said, happy are the people to whom this comes down, happy are the minds which carry this, and happy are the tongues which utter this. Darimi, so, we've established your God Allah performs ibadah because you just admit when you recite Quran, that's ibadah, that's worship. You worship Allah by reciting Quran. And yet Allah is reciting Quran thousand years before creation. So he's performing ibadah. Your Allah has at least two right hands, a left hand, at least three eyes. He has gonads. He has a waist. He wears an izar, a garment. He has a foot. He has a shin. That means he has a body that's uncreated, which means he needs space. And you're telling me your God needs nothing, needs no one, and he's not like you. Well, maybe he doesn't recite like you, but he recites like you. If you recite Quran, he recites Quran. That means he's like you in reciting Quran, but he recites it better. What do you do with the black stone? Because you tell me Tawheed, right? You tell me Tawheed, okay. So when your prophet made it sunnah, that when you perform Umrah, Hajj, you go to the Kaaba, you have to kiss the black stone and touch it and weep on it if you can, or at least touch it with a stick or symbolize touching with your hand, and then says that the black stone came down, it was white, it became black from the sins of the people kissing it, sons of Adam, and it erases your sin, and on the day of judgment, it will be given two eyes and a tongue to intercede for you. You believe that? You believe the black stone is going to do that for you? Actions will speak up on the day of judgment. It will speak. That's what I'm saying. You believe that? It will speak. It will basically speak up for you on the day of judgment. It will speak what on the day of judgment? It will speak up. Yes, I know. The black stone will speak up for those who kissed it and touched it, right? Right? It means that... You're, ex you're giving me... Well, it means that Allah's going to give it, it says, eyes and a tongue to speak. I got the hadith. I'll show it to you. It means Allah will make it able to speak so it can defend you. And it says it turned black from the sons of Adam. And erases sins. So you're okay with a black stone erasing your sin if you kiss it, touch it, and becoming black because it means it's absorbing your sin and the black stone interceding for you. And what the hell is your problem with Jesus and his love dying on the cross to pay the debt of your sin so you can be forgiven and he's your Shafi, your intercessor? You do with the black stone what we say about Jesus. So you've taken... The things Christians say about Jesus and you attribute it to a black stone. What do you, What religion is this, man? You want me to show you the Hadiths where your black stone comes to life? Okay, let me show it to you and I'll give you the article. Hold on. Right here. Here it is. I'm going to give you the article then I'll give you the Hadiths. So your black stone does what Jesus does. And you guys complain about us. Here it goes. Here is the article. I'm going to give you the uh, hadith. Guys, this is for you. Save these articles. All right. Here, look what he says. Again, sunnah.com. Sunnah.com. It's great. Hassan. It's good. Hassan. So you don't think I'm lying. And I give the links in my article. Here it goes. So you can see I've sent it to you private and everyone else. Here goes right here. All right. This comes from Sunan Ibn Majah. Sunan Ibn Majah, Hadith 2944. And I gave you the link online to read it. Okay, it's Hassan. It's good. Sa'ad bin Jubayr is reported to have said, I heard Ibn Abbas saying that Allah's Messenger said, This stone must come on the day of resurrection, it will have two eyes. To see with and a tongue to talk with, bearing witness for him who caressed it with truth. 
Hassan, and here's another version. In case you missed it, Jami at Tirmidhi. Jami at Tirmidhi. Okay, watch here. So, Hassan, great Hassan, guys. So, you can see it. it's in the article. Guys, use this stuff. Here you go. There it is for you, too. So, I'm, I'm wondering. You you left Jesus for a black stone. Okay. Whatever makes you happy. Jami Tirmidhi. Let me put it on the screen for you. So, everyone sees the classification. Hassan, Jami Tirmidhi. Right there. And let's read. And it's, it's by Ibn Abbas, by the way. Muhammad's first co cousin, whom Allah gave wisdom to know the deen because muhammad prayed for him so if this man doesn't know your deen nobody does here it is the book of hajj kitab al-hajj what you're supposed to do in hajj what has been related about the black stone ibn abbas narrated ibn abbas narrated that the messenger of allah said about the black stone wallah by law allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with testifying to ever touched it in truth so the black stone is your intercessor you okay with that mm -mm -mm. you okay with having to kiss a black stone touch it caress it weep on it like your prophet did and Umar ibn al-Khattab, did he not say when he went to kiss it? He goes, I know you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits anyone. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. Because Muhammad did it, I do it. So you believe the black stone will erase your sin if you show it love and respect and it will intercede for you. So you believe... About the black stone, what we said Jesus did for us. So what is your problem with Christianity? Why did you leave it when you don't know it? You want us to follow this? I mean, we're basically forgiven with actions like prayer, fasting. Okay, so then why kiss the black stone and why have it come and defend you? Mm, we even get forgiven by wudu. Yeah, but you didn't answer my question. Why then kiss the black stone? And why did it become black from the sons of the the sins of the sons of Adam? And why does it erase sin? Why then do all of that if wudu and prayer forgives your sins? So then why add this? Why are you doing what the pagans did? Didn't the pagans say the same thing to Muhammad? In chapter 39, verse 3, it says, We only serve these idols, and they had stones, black stones, one of them, so they can bring us closer to Allah. That's exactly what the black stone is doing. It's bringing closer to Allah. So then why Muhammad kiss it, touched it, wept on it, if everything else can forgive your sins, so why do this? And why does it come to life to intercede for you? Why then? Why then? Because you just said, wudu, you know, erase this sin when you put water in your mouth. That's washing your mouth of sin. Okay. Prayer. Okay, so then if these are... Remove your sin. Why add this? So that even Omar ibn al-Khattab can say, I know you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits. Had I not seen the Messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So then why do this? This is idolatry. And yet you say, Tawheed, Ahad, Ahad. And again, I'm asking you, why is the black stone doing for you what we Christians said Jesus does for us? And why do you have a problem with Jesus and his love doing that for us? But you don't have a problem with a black stone doing it for you. So you didn't answer that question. Go on. And by the way, you said wudu, right? Yeah, wudu. Okay. Do you know why you wake up in the morning and you're supposed to put water in and out of your nose three times? You do that, right? Yeah. Do you know why? Because my mouth is dirty. No, in your nose. <laughs> Why do you snort water in and out of your nose three times? Because it's filthy. Because it's dirty. No, because Muhammad said Satan sleeps in your nose. You're flushing shaitan out of your nose. Here, let me show you that. You didn't even know that? They didn't tell you that? They didn't tell you that? Here it is. Mm -hmm. 
is one of the ways to. It's what? One of the ways to one's mind and thoughts. Satan. No, it says Satan is in your nose. It didn't say you're cleansing evil thoughts. Here it is. Sal Bukhari. You can try to explain it there you want. I'm just telling you what your prophet said. Your prophet said this. So if you want to tell me your prophet doesn't know how to explain the deen, you're making your own interpretation. Sal Bukhari, book 59, hadith 104 in English is volume 4, book 54, hadith 516. I gave you the link. I, did I give you guys the link too? Here, let me get. Yeah, I did. Now here, let's read. So I'm going to have to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, here it goes. I'm going to put that deeth right here. Read. Narin Abu Huraira, the prophet said, if any one of you rouses from sleep and performs the ablution, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice, three times, because Satan, Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all night. You're flushing out Satan from your nose. So Satan's in your nose. You know that, right? I already, already clarified it. You, well, how do you clarify? You're telling me you're explaining it better than your prophet? No, it's not, uh, I take from scholars. What? Again, listen to what you're telling me. Your prophet, who's supposed to explain the deen, he could have said, you are flushing water in nose because you're cleansing the dirt in your nose. He could have said that. Because no one speaks better than any prophet. But then your scholars come and then they're telling you what he means. So they're explaining Muhammad's explanation of the practices. And that's some scholars. Not every scholar says that. Many scholars say we should believe this. We may not understand it. We should believe it. Here, let me give you an example. So, again, don't give me your scholars. I gave you Muhammad. Stick with Muhammad, not scholars, because not all scholars agree, because the same scholars will tell you, no, Allah's hands, they're not literal. Hands means power. Eyes means he sees. So why are you appealing to scholars when I'm giving you your prophet? Let me show you what the, uh, what the narration says here. The commentator, the translator, I'm sorry, Bukhari, Muhammad Muskhan Khan. The translator of Bukhari. This hadith, look what he says. Here it is. The footnote, if you get the hard copy of his translation of Sal Bukhari, he says this. The footnote to this particular hadith states, we should believe that Satan actually stays in the upper part of one's nose. Though we cannot perceive how, for this is related to the unseen world of which we know nothing except what Allah tells us through his messenger. So you're telling me some scholars, other scholars say they're lying. The prophet says he's in our nose. We accept it. Allahu Adam. So why are you explaining it away? Why are you explaining it away? So I'm going to ask you a question since your prophet says Satan is in the nose. All Muslims, if they're devout Muslims, must get up in the morning and perform wudu. If they're faithful Muslims, and all Muslims must put water in and out of their nose three times, correct? Yeah. So does that mean Satan is in all of your noses? Is he in my nose too? So if I don't perform wudu, he stays in my nose, and then he's in your nose, and he's in your mother's nose, and my sister's nose, and my daughter's nose, and he's in the nose of everyone? Is that what you believe? Like I said, it means that he puts filthy thoughts in your mind. You're you're not following me, buddy. He's in my nose, so you're saying in my nose he's putting filthy thoughts. Okay, but that means he's in everyone's noses. Your nose, your mother's nose, your sister's nose, my sister's nose, my daughter's nose. Man, this Satan's very powerful. And how does water flush him out? Water is physical. Satan also, he's physical, so he can be flushed out by water. And why three? Why not two? Why not four? You left a Jesus you don't know for this stupid religion. When are you going to come back, dude? You made a mistake. You made a mistake. You know that. I mean, come on. Be honest. You made a mistake. And 
you clearly believe Muhammad is al insan al kamil, a better example than Jesus, and he's the perfect man. He's he's the yeah. perfect man, and he's an example for you to emulate. And he is a better example than Jesus. The Jesus you read about in the Gospels, even a better example than Paul. You seriously believe this? In light of what your own ahadith said your prophet did? See, for us, Jesus is the standard as you read the Gospels. We look at Jesus and his life, and we even see the life of his followers like Paul, whom you guys don't accept. Then you come and tell us Muhammad is al-insan al-kamil, the perfect man. Sayyid in Mursaleen, the master of the sent ones, and the leader of the sons of Adam. And then we look at his life and see how disgusting it is. You actually left this beautiful Jesus for this man. Welcome back. Hope you've learned on this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe to our YouTube channels, and hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. As you can see in this video, this Muslim can't even defend his religion, which he claimed he converted into Islam for the past eight months. And some asked him that what is the Quran that they have taught him about. And he said the Quran is the word of God. Where some started by showing him proof that the Quran is not even the word of God, but it is written by their prophet. And some went forward to show him where it was written in the Quran, that Allah prayed with the Quran. And some asked him, does this mean that the word of Allah is still praying for his own self? If Islam said the Quran is Allah, then why will Allah pray with his own word? Then this Muslim man kept quiet and some went forward and showed him where it was said in the Quran that their Allah has only one hand. So does this thing mean that their Allah is incomplete in making or is not complete in formed making? And some showed him in the Quran it was said that Allah is, is an human being, is having a hand and a leg. So that means your Allah stands in one place and makes moves in one place. Then this Muslim man was really confused because he was just newly converted in the Islam religion. And some <coughs> asked him, if he as a person can believe that Allah can become the word of God, so why is it that it is hard for him to believe the word of God that is written in the Bible can become flesh? And he kept quiet. And some guide him in the scripture that when Jesus Christ died, the word of God is the word of God that was written in the Old Testament have been said from the Old Testament is Jesus and lead him into Christ back to redemption. After he found out all these things written in the Quran about their Allah and his and the prophet he's serving is about going to serve. Sam had to lead him to Christ and told him to go to the nearby church for baptism. Hope you've learned from this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share to your loved ones trying to convert from a Christian to the Islam. They haven't found out this truth about this Quran. Thanks for watching this video. Please do it to share. Please do it to share. Subscribe to our channels and hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified.